Hello, I'm Harold. I've, I was just thinking about uh, years ago when I was in Saudi Arabia, I had, uh, this guy was leaving and he wanted to sell this old Mercedes 350 SEL. And like an idiot, I bought it, you know. And uh, so, anyway, that, that, that car liked to ate me up on repairs. But uh, one, one, one story in particular about it is I had a bunch of trainees <clears throat> that came from Al Hassel, and that was way down south from where I lived. And they would come up and they would train for two weeks, and then they'd spend a week back in Al Hassel. Well, I, I had one of them invite me to come down to Al Hassel and meet his family and such. So, first day off I had, I took the wife and uh, with the kids, and we hopped in that old Mercedes and headed for Al Hassel. And the sand was blowing that day, about a a foot off the ground was just a layer of sand blowing across the road all the way down there. And it was blowing across the road all the way back. And uh, we had almost got all the way back and it was getting dark and I turned on the headlights and they were kind of like a couple little candles. And that's when I come to realize we didn't, <laughs> we didn't have any electricity in the battery. So anyway, uh, I, I almost made it back home. There was a road going to the little off camp area that I lived in about a quarter of a mile and I got part way down that and it just died you know well what caused all this problem is uh, on that Mercedes they had the uh, supreme engineering ability to stick the alternator down in the, at the lowest point on the engine it was run down there running in that sand that was blowing across the road so on the way down there I sandblasted it and I I don't remember if there's any sand coming back, but probably the sandblasting that got on the way down there was good enough. So I went to the Mercedes dealer down in DeMond, and he said, well, that's the heavy duty. It was a 65 amp alternator. That was the heavy duty one, and they didn't have any. They'd have to order it from Germany or wherever. <clears throat> but I'd heard uh, I'd heard about uh, the big junkyard by north end of DeMond, so I took the company truck I had there on hand. Uh, I guess I was borrowing somebody's and drove out there and sure enough I stopped off the highway and I looked and going down the hill and up the hill was just acres of junkyard as far as you could see. So I saw some guys working out there on a the car and I got out and walked out and asked them if I could look for, for a Mercedes. Yeah, okay, okay, you know, shoof, shoof, you know, which means look. And uh, so I went wandering through there and I wandered on and on and on not finding a Mercedes and finally I came over a little rise into the spot and there was a Mercedes and so I walk up there to take a look at it and I don't know where comes this guy that's kind of excited and he's making hand cutting off gestures at me and everything and he he grabbed me by the my belt from the back and got a, a neck in the, you know and he just tiptoe bum rushed me right out in the middle of the road the first time I'd ever had that, I guess it's a, something bouncers do. Maybe he was a bouncer somewhere. <laughs> I don't know. But I was totally surprised and shocked by the whole thing. Of course, I felt all violated. Here I feel all violated even telling you about it. But uh, he just, he threw me bodily right out in the middle of the road there. And uh, I walked up the road. It must have been nearly a half a mile or so back to where the truck was. And on the way back, I come to realize that I had gone through a whole lot of junkyards, and that wasn't just one giant junkyard that belonged to one, one Muhammad. There were a bunch of Muhammads out there that uh, had their junkyards, and they knew which one was theirs. Well, I didn't. I couldn't. There was no fences or anything. I couldn't tell one guy's junkyard from another. I didn't see what their, uh, what their market was, but obviously I had uh, trespassed into a junkyard where I wasn't welcome. So I drove back down to DeMond downtown and went back to the Mercedes dealer and ordered that heavy-duty alternator and, and just rode the bus until it came in. That was a uh, heck of a mess. Well, I've been watching Mr. Pete, and he casts these lead flywheels for his model engines, and I want to build a little model engine, and I want to, I want a flywheel just like Mr. Pete. So uh, I'm going to start working on it today and, and I thought about two different designs one I could make in aluminum which would be a lot easier to machine or I could make uh, a, a, uh, a mold out of steel 
and then I can cast aluminum or lead in it. Mr. Pete makes his out of lead. And then I thought, well, why don't I do both? I can make one with, uh, with aluminum. And uh, once I get that done, if it works out right and it's easier, then I can make a, another one out of steel that I could cast aluminum flywheels in if I felt like it. So that's today's project and probably tomorrow's and so on for, for a little bit. Uh, my DRO is supposed to come in today, but it's in Tennessee, so I don't think it's going to make it here. Um, maybe next week. Who knows what, what tomorrow is going to bring. So I'm going out to the garage now and get after the flywheel mold. All right, to get material for a mold, I've got to cut out a couple of pieces of this uh, aluminum. This area here is going to be one square, and this area over here, the line down the middle was just so I could get the center and make sure these two lines were equally spaced apart. So I'm going to cut her down both sides, and then I'll cut it in half in the middle, and then we'll put it in the mill and smooth it out with a fly cutter. I'm sure it needs that. And then we'll make some pins to pin the two halves together. And from there, it's... Uh, it's all just good from that point. So we'll get started cutting. All right, here we go. set up on the mill, we can start squaring away the sides of these things, at least a little bit. I thought that was a great little squeeze bottle when I got it, but it's not too grand. All right, find out how close we have to it. find where my little shield is at and put it up there. I guess I have to make another one. I just have to think I used it for something. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Here's a little shield to keep me from catching so much of that stuff. Well, no. Well, darn it. Okay, there we go.
gonna go. I'm gonna come back in a couple minutes. All right, so I've turned it over. I'm gonna make these two about the same, hopefully. And uh, of course, I'll have to drop the the bit, the end mill, just a little bit there. That should be about right. <laughs> clamp on there and roll it over and try to level it off and that should keep everything straight at least straight enough all you do is find my clamp which may take a minute I'm gonna be back in a minute with a clamp all right I got my clamp on, <coughs> clamp on there that ought to hold it pretty good when I take it off of there clean off some of these shavings I, uh, I need to deburr the edge a little bit. Hopefully I can do that without letting anything move. I think I can. Yeah, that works pretty good there. And it's working out pretty good here too, so. Everything's pretty well deburred. I'll roll it over and put it into the vise like this. And then I'll try to uh, level it up some. I've got a level here somewhere that I can use on it. And uh, I'll go find my level and be right back. All right, I've rolled this thing to where it says zero on both sides. I'm going to zoom back out here. And I'll just set it up here. And move these little boogers around until I get sort of zeroed. And, well, that's sort of zero right there. So we'll go, we'll go to that. I guess better to be lucky than, than smart, huh? Okay, so got it changed over to a fly cutter. Let's see how low I can go with the fly cutter here. Alright, I just won't take off about five thousand, I think. 